Welcome back to part two of looking at doing substance designer type stuff in Houdini. I will leave a link for part one in the description. We have built a basic system where we can create some shapes and bring them into the compositor in Houdini and manipulate the data there, the heights data, and bring it back out into SOPS again. Let's take a look at some other little bits and pieces we can do to build out our COP network to make it a slight bit more uh, interesting here. Now there's a couple of little things that you'll find with cops. The first is, is these swatches are sometimes useful but after a little while they get kind of annoying so more often than not you want to hide them away. So you can select all the cops that you want and you can right click and you can say flag and you can turn off the thumbnails and that will make it shorter. Now the only problem that you'll have is let's say we put down a, another uh, cop node so I'm going to put down just a, a blur or something like that for example. The new cop that I put down the thumbnail will be open so if you want to set it so that new cops, new cop nodes don't have thumbnails, you need to go into edit uh, your general user interface preferences and into network. Uh, so go to network editor nodes and trees and turn this guy off. Show preview on new cops nodes. Okay, so you turn that off and you can hit apply here, uh, except and that will go away. And now if I put down a blur here, yeah, I don't get the thumbnail. So that was a little hint I found up on uh, Tokaroo. So thank you, Matty, for that, because those thumbnails get quite annoying after a little while. Let's go and build this out a little bit more. Now, what you'll find when you come into COPS is there isn't an enormous amount of patterns in here, uh, like you might expect. I mean, we have some things that we can use, uh, roto shapes, and we've got some shapes here. There, There isn't a huge amount of patterns here overall. However, there is a VOP a VOP COP generator where we can generate more patterns using VOPs. If we dive in here, we are in we are in a COPS implementation of VOPs. You gotta you gotta love the Houdini jargon at times. Let's take a look here and you'll see that yeah we get all of the VOPs that we'd normally get out in uh, uh, if we put down a VOP in SOPS, including all of these kind of patterns here. So we can make some interesting shapes with these. Um, so let's build out a little uh, VOP setup here. Uh, so I'm just going to throw down a, a crackle node here, which and you know they're all just different types of noises, really. I'm going to put down a float to vector here, and what we want to do is we want to take the uh, horizontal pixel position and the vertical pixel position. So essentially, go through each pixel and give them a color, or do something to that pixel. So uh, these are the ones we want here. So we're going to take this one and I'm going to plug it into component one because it's a float value and another float here and we'll output a vector and then we can use that vector uh, to start driving our noise. So I'm going to pump this into the UV coordinates of my crackle and I'm going to take my crackle and I'm going to put it back into a vector to float. So back into a vector to float and let's go and hook this up to red, green and blue. Now, I need to jump back over to compositing to be able to see this thing. So jump back over to your composite view here and let's put our viewer on here and I get this. Uh, so I want to take the frequency width, softness, etc. and I want to uh, move it up a level. Do each one individually if I want. I can middle mouse and promote a parameter, but let's just do it this way. If I right click on the node and I go Vex, Vox, Vex Vops options, we can say create input parameters and if I that'll do all of them. And if I go up a level now and I press P, yeah, here we go. Here's all my noise and everything else just there. Uh, so let's try and mix this in with what we've got. So this is the thing coming from uh, our height field. Let's put down a composite node and we can plug in our height field into A and we'll plug our uh, Vopcut generator into B here. I'm going to put the display flag to this guy and let's just change around the settings a little bit. So I'm going to change it to two by two, as you could see before. Four, the, the noise is way too big. So two, yeah, generally you want to break up your noise so that they're not the same in each angle. So so let's go two by uh, seven or eight over here just to kind of get a more elongated shape. Uh, we can change around the width and we can kind of play around with the softness. I'm going to make it a bit softer than it is here. Let's put it up to uh, 50 and that'll keep it on the softer side. Uh, that's good enough for now. Here's what I had coming through from there. And I'm getting these other interesting shapes coming through from my crackle. Let's see if we can sort of composite them together. Now, really, I like to treat it as more of an artistic thing where I can come in and just swap around minimum, maximum, etc. to go down through those. I'm going to plug this back over to my blur. Yeah, let's bring the blur 
off for a second and let's just pump this back out to cops and let's go back over and take a look and see what's happening. So I'm going to jump into the top view here. So I'm going to be looking at my output, uh, but I'm inside of my composite and you can see that, you know, I'm getting all of this extra detail coming through from the crackle, uh, the crackle layer here, right? So, okay, I can play around with my composite stuff. Let's just try a few different ones here. So that's minimum. It's bringing more true of the kind of black and white values or we could try and screen them together, etc. So you, you, you know, you basically end up going through and sort of playing around with them and seeing what's getting you the, the shapes that you want. Now, in this case, I think, yeah, I think I'll leave it at minimum, which is bringing through more of the crackle, right? So it's bringing through more of this noise generator that I've just created. Uh, so I'll throw down one or two other noises. So I'm just going to copy these two nodes here and paste them. Just move all this stuff down. And let's hook it up here. And let's go and throw down another noise or two. So let's throw down uh, a veins here. We'll do similar to what we had before. And now my float to vector is going to go to uh, position for my veins. And the vein amount here can go into our uh, input vector. And let's go and promote all of those parameters as well. And we can jump up here and let's hook up our veins. I might turn off the previous noise. So this is the veins coming through. In fact, I'm going to jump over to the composite view for a second and let's just look at the vein. Uh, so let's increase the vein spacing to get a little bit more of this kind of veiny thing coming through. We can maybe lower the attenuation so it's a slight bit softer uh, overall. And we can pull down the amplitude just a little bit so we're not getting so many of the smaller shapes. You know, play around with the frequency, etc. Right? Until you get something like what you're looking for. That is now layered in over, I'm bypassing the crackle and let's go back and look over in our scene view and now we're getting these veins coming through and we're getting lots of nice detail and of course our, we get lots and lots of resolution with textures, that's the big advantage to textures overall. So there's a couple of things we can take a look at doing to make our lives a little bit easier in COPS. The default behaviour in COPS is to select a node and then move the display flag, much like in SOPS. I would suggest that you could select a node and hit R and that will move the display flag anyway but you can also change it up here. So you can have uh, image and handles follow display, image follows display, but the handles follow the selected node. So at the moment I'm looking at this node over here, but if I select this one, it shows, it shows the controls for this one here, and it will show the handle for the selected node in the viewport. Uh, so for example, if I select the blur here, it shows the handle for the blur. Now the other option is this one here, which means that if you just click on a node, it will ignore the display flag and it will show the output of that node. So here I'm just looking at this node. Now the display flag is still down here, but I'm just looking at this node. And if I select this one, it shows me this node. Okay, and that shows me just the height field coming in. So we need to pay a little attention to which one of these we choose. I'm actually gonna leave it on the default behavior just so you can uh, very clearly see which node I'm looking at. Though you might find uh, the final behavior to be a little faster when you're jumping around in rather large composites. Okay, we can view multiple uh, images at the same time. So if we want to see um, like a before and after, we can view them at the same time here. And you've got various different controls for how the viewports are linked. You see, you can link the viewports so that they zoom in and out at the same time. Now that can be quite handy when you're doing smaller changes later on and you want to uh, see the updates further down the chain. Okay, let's jump back to SOPS and look at converting our height field into a mesh. I can always convert that height field if I need to. So we'll go convert height field and we can convert it over to a mesh. And now that we have it as a mesh, we can go off and color it. If we wanted to do vertex coloring, we could use uh, the um, attribute just color nodes. But in this case, just to finish it up, I'm just going to put down a quick material. And in my quick material, then I'm just going to uh, so I'm going to go and grab some textures I have previously, and I have these uh, named as a sequence. So what I can do is just load them in, and that will bring in uh, some textures for the base color, and I can do the same thing for the normal for the normal, and I'll get some normals on there as well. Uh, so that's just a, a very quick little lighting setup there to take a look at the normal map as I'm bringing it in. And I'm starting to get nice detail now uh, because the base color is brought in as an image sequence here and the normal map is brought in as an image sequence as well. So I can step through on my frames here and my normal map on my 
Um, and color map will get swapped out so I can kind of step through just a texture library basically and, and see what kind of textures are working on top, right? Kind of breaking scale here a little bit. So let's just throw down a UV transform just here. And in my UV transform, then I'm just going to link my scale. That's a rel relative reference that and I can, you know, scale it down. So, it, you know, I don't lose my overall uh, sense that the terrain is a little bit bigger. So that's the, the basic overall workflow. Maybe just to finish it off and just to kind of highlight maybe that we could take this a lot further in terms of height fields. Uh, let's, before we convert it here, let's take our height field and let's just run an erode node on this. Now I'm going to set the um, play bar back to one and I'm going to put down a height field erode node here. And we could do some quick erosion on our height fields before we convert it. Now, this is going to take a second to play through, so I'll just pause the video while it does this. I'm not interested in the visualizer, so I'm gonna turn the visualizer off for now. And I can just step back through my erosion, and you can see it starts to erode away some of the surfaces. So if you were going for a more worn, slightly more organic look to your uh, to your surfaces, this might be uh, quite useful to go and look at. Uh, so we started off with something that was a bit sharper overall, and it looks a little bit more worn down. And that, I guess, is just sort of hinting at some of the power that you might get through masking and uh, the other height fields nodes. But hopefully that gives you a good flavor for the basic process. I do think that this particular process um, has quite a lot of potential to create lots of different types of surfaces. But hopefully this is enough to get you started and I'll see you in the next video.